While unprecedented wildfires burn across California, Arizona largely avoided catastrophe during its dry season in spring, in part because of proactive restrictions at national forests that help minimize the risk. Meantime, hundreds of firefighters from Arizona have joined crews on the front lines in California, where the deadly fires have also sparked discussion about the role of climate change in their intensity and growth. It's an issue we explored with U of A professors Donald Falk and Michael Crimmins, both experts in wildfire behavior and climate change, respectively. The fundamental um, cause of climate change, and we're really talking about the, the long-term trend in temperature and the ex expectation of cont continuing uh, change in temperature, is the um, emissions of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Things that people are contributing to. That's right. So again, it's back to the, the fossil fuel. So you know, everything from burning coal at the beginning of the Industrial Re Revolution to um, cars using fuel and us using airplanes. Okay, so people, one factor. Wildfires, Don, I know you're the fire guy. That also contributes to climate change? It does indirectly. When fires, when vegetation burns, it emits a lot of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, including CO2, carbon monoxide, a lot of other things that actually do contribute to climate change. Some years, that actually is a significant factor in greenhouse gas emissions. In the long run, though, there's no question that our human combustion of fossil fuels is the bigger factor. Right now, we have you both in during the summertime. We're seeing wildfires, especially in California. That's obviously a part of this. Are we seeing this in other areas of, you said, the country, but also around the world? It's not only the occurrence of a fire, it's how it behaves. And that means how hot it gets, how long the, the uh, flames are, how fast it moves. And so we have to think not only about the area that's burning, but how those fires are burning. And we see definitely an expanding footprint of fire all around the world. What we're seeing globally, that has an impact on what we're seeing here, for example, in the U.S. and the Southwest. Yeah, absolutely. So all of these weather patterns globally are going to end up feeding back onto the, to the West. So seasonally, we are seeing the kind of normal progression of heating up of the West, progression of the monsoon season into the Southwest, sort of slowing down our, our, our uh, wildfire season here. There are still wildfires burning in Arizona. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, several lightning ignitions over the last couple of weeks. But I think that the, the fire management agencies are starting to use those as opportunities to move the fire around and use them in a productive way to bring fire back onto the landscape. What's happening right now yeah. with our climate, what does this tell us about 10 years away, 20 years away? So we all know that because of the, the factors that drive climate change, a certain amount of climate change is already in the atmosphere. It's already happening, even if we stopped emitting uh, greenhouse gases today, it's certainly going to take a long time for that, uh, for that to level off. And so when we look ahead the next 20 to 30 years, we definitely see increasing area burned in the western U.S. In fact, I looked this morning at some of our previous projections, and sometimes you hate to be right, but this area that, where these big fires are happening is one of the areas where we projected a two to four time increase in wildfire area burned. So I would say with the temperature increases that are pretty much already committed to happening and the physics of fire that we're going to see bigger fire seasons. You guys study this though. Are we as prepared as we should have been for what's taking place right now? Nobody should be surprised that we're having these big fire seasons. And honestly, the long-term strategy is if you want to avoid these mega fires, you've got to get serious about climate. And that's a 20 to 50 year strategy. In the meantime, you have to have a level of preparedness and training year-round fire crews and doing a lot more thinning of these flashy fuels than we have been doing. Mike, you're the climate guy. That makes sense to you? Absolutely. I, I think that um, from, from an Arizona perspective, too, we have this really unique climate where we have a, a winter wet season, I have to use my air quotes, and then the summer monsoon season. And so our fire season is bracketed between these two seasons. So any changes in either of those seasons can either lengthen or shorten the fire season. Overnight temperatures are increasing faster than, than daily high temperatures. And the interesting thing about that is, is that as you have uh, warmer overnight temperatures, your relative humidity overnight doesn't increase as you'd expect to as, as it would when it would be cooler out. So having warmer overnight temperatures, lower relative humidities, more nocturnal um, fire behavior that you wouldn't normally see. And so I think that that's been one of the hallmarks of the California fires is these warmer overnight temperatures. They're now seeing overnight fire activity that they haven't seen before. Wildfires are costing us, on average, $20 billion a year when you take in not only the cost of suppression, but all the economic costs, costs uh, insurance losses, and so forth. If you put that $20 billion to work trying to improve the condition of the forest, 
and give us a better level of preparedness, you would not put people's sure. lives at risk as much and you could really get a, a, out ahead of the curve. Are we adapting enough as a society, as people, about how we just conduct our day-to-day -day activities? Um, probably not, but I don't think we ever have <laughs> as human beings. We're always kind of playing catch up and sort of responding to our conditions. Um, and I think as John is saying, is there are programs where in the Western U.S. of trying to live with fire. I mean, that, that's, this is part of our ecosystems. We need to um, have them as part of our ecosystems. There's programs like FireWise, which the state has invested in here in Arizona, and, and my job within, ex within Extension has invested in as well. So it's, I think it's working within communities that are sort of living in the forest or living on the, on the fringes of the forest in the wildland urban interface is having people have the proper relationship in these ecosystems with fire. Okay, my thanks to both of you. Thank you.